Hi right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tag. My name is Alan and joining us today... American Ben. And the reason he's here is we're doing a two-part episode. Part two of this video will be on our second channel, Generation Films, which we do together. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about how Chancellor Palpatine, or Palpatine as the President of the United States, would take over the world. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, crazy people out there who want to uh, want to take over power, do it through brute force, but Palpatine right. is somebody more conniving, right? He is a really uh, smooth operator. We've created a scenario, basically, where we show just how he would manipulate the various world leaders and the American populace in order to take control. Okay, so let's start with phase one. What exactly does Palpatine need to do in order to take over more executive power in the United States? So the first thing he would obviously have to do is he would have to gain the trust and loyalties of the people and even the emotions. Mm -hmm. He would probably need to generate some sort of fear that right. would allow him to do th extreme things that go against these ingrained American ideals right, something and give him more power. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, which w so he would need to basically cut down on the checks and balances that define America. Right. The first thing he would need to do to do that is to have some sort of manufactured crisis, correct? Right. So the crisis that we've chosen uh, is essentially um, there's going to be a major split between uh, essentially states' rights uh, proponents and federal rights, right? I mean, this is a old battle. This would split the country during the Civil War. So that's going to be kind of the forefront of uh, the issue we have here. Good. Right, and he would need to also make it so probably the opposition party is the enemy that's, you know, going to be behind this, you know, false flag attack or this crisis. Uh, so he can use it to, you know, vilify them and lead the people to support any sort of policies that he and his party is behind and put his own people in power. Right, exactly. So, this is exactly what he did during the Clone Wars. He created the Separatist Alliance. He seated Count Dooku as his opposition leader. So now, in our scenario, basically Texas threatens to cede from the Union uh, under the guise of the opposition party, which is also... Uh, Palpatine's puppets. Following Texas, California also threatens to secede from the right. Union. Two, two states in real life that have often had some secession movements that right, exactly. probably be the first to do so. So one of the major problems you face when a state secedes from the Union is the fact that there are still federal institutions, federal employees like the military, uh, nuclear missile silos still in that state and there's going to be probably a uh, a, a power struggle, right? Right. So like the National Guard, yeah. for instance, right? There's a lot of National Guard troops that are stationed within states. Right. And so there's a little bit of a gray area between who controls them. And often it's the governors who make the call on what National Guard troops do. And so in the yeah. case of a state seceding or some sort of rebellion, you know, where do those, what do those National Guard troops do? Where do they Especially if they're Texan National Guards. We're right. talking about uh, Texan uh, citizens who are basically fighting the National Guard. So they might actually go on the side of their state. There's still a lot of state loyalty in places right. like Texas, so yeah. So basically right now, I mean, Palpatine doesn't even need to create a false flag attack. Basically, he's created a situation where you have armed individuals with uh, questionable loyalties and there's gonna, be a, there's gonna be a firefight between federal forces and pro-Texas and pro-California forces. Right, so he, he'll have his crisis Mm -hmm. And at that point, Hill will need to kind of act on that crisis, right? right. The country and will be in a state of emergency. The country will be in a state of emergency, right? It's friends in the media or right. something like that uh, put out a story that says we need to suspend this, right? We need to suspend habeas corpus. And then he'll come out and make a speech and say something like, It is with great reluctance that I have agreed to this calling. You know, as much as we need to preserve democratic ideals, we are in a state of emergency, mm. and like Abraham Lincoln before me, yes. we must suspend the right of habeas corpus temporarily in order to restore our democracy to full function. So what is habeas corpus? What right, so it's mean? the right to a fair trial for, and in this case it would be for all of these people who are a part of the secession against the United States. Or right, so now this is the opposition party. This is the, basically the opposition in the Senate. Right. And and not only is he going to arrest the California and Texas lawmakers that are basically uh, leadership in this the secession movement, he's also going to take these uh, political leaders in all the states around the country. Because remember, there's a fear that other states will follow uh, what Texas and California is doing and create more states that are going to leave the unions. Right. So right away, 
he gets rid of basically uh, basically all of his political opposition in the Senate. Right, and the, yeah. and the people will also see him as a hero for it because he's protecting the country right. from those who are treasonous and want to destroy it. It wasn't his idea, it was some political pundit that Right, said, he didn't. Yeah. He did it very reluctantly, he didn't want to do it, but it, he, he had to do it. So, Classic what are comedy. some other uh, rights he might take away? I think another thing he would go after would be the Second Amendment because sure. not only are National Guards been fighting against federal, uh, federal uh, military, there's also a lot of militia members, just private homeowners who want to protect their property. There's a lot of shooting going on and you know there are a lot of guns in Texas and California and he's gonna make uh, at least an emergency I guess referendum on the uh, Constitution temporarily withhold the Second Amendment right yeah. so it's hard to say if he'll do it as a blanket restriction maybe he'll do right. it in a more clever way like well, we're gonna ban these types of guns or that types of guns yeah uh, that type of guns uh, this is gonna be harder for him to do right because right. it's harder for him to argue but he has to do it and so the last thing he's gonna have to do is I, I think he's going to have to also suspend the elements of the United States Constitution mm -hmm. that empower the states. So like right. The Limit tenth, states' rights. So like the Tenth Amendment, which right. says that any any powers not specifically invested in the federal government falls to the states' governments. He would have to then uh, redact that amendment in order to have any sort of default powers fall back to the federal government. That's or right. at least not have them automatically fall to the state governments. And right there, you limit state power. Okay, so at this point, what do you have? You have basically arrested the complete, uh, all of your opposition leaders in Senate. You need to hold emergency elections. Right, Night. which Palpatine will probably come out and he will once again say, um, we, e even though we are in this state of emergency, no. what I could do is I could just appoint people to these positions, but I won't do that. We will hold fair elections. We will hold fair elections and maintain the rule of democracy. I love democracy. I love the Republic. Right. Yeah, and at this point, the opposition party, they will lose several of their veteran lawmakers. They'll all be in jail. And essentially, Palpatine's party will pretty much sweep the entire uh, lower and upper house. I mean, sure, there'll be some independents in there, probably. But more or less, who'll have control of the Senate? Palpatine is able to usurp control of the mm. entirety of Congress and be called the Democratic hero in the same process. He is the Senate. He is the Senate? He's the Senate. I am the Senate. So now Palpatine has control of the Senate, but how do you really turn a democracy into a dictatorship, which is what he wants? Yeah, you have to eliminate all sort of vertical and horizontal separations of power and checks and balances, mm -hmm. and you need to invest the entire power of the government in the executive's hands. So the only thing standing in his way is the... the judicial branch. Okay, so... And in order to get rid of the judicial branch, I mean, these are lifetime appoint appointees. He basically needs to, you know, kill one maybe force another one for early retirement. Yep. He just needs a majority. That's all he needs. Yep, that the judicial are, uh, branch is too hard for him to find a way to usurp the power from in some sort of democratic or appearing the appearance of democratic right. way. He's going to have to basically um, you know, kill them under the table and make it seem like it wasn't him. So at this point, Palpatine has consolidated all of the power in the U.S. government into the executive branch and he'll basically have that power until the next election, but he'll need to do something really big and grandiose for the American people to convince them that he should stay there for maybe forever because he needs to take over the world and it'll take some time. So what is Palpatine's plan? The Refugee Workers Amnesty Program. Palpatine decides the best way to stimulate the economy is to reinvigorate the manufacturing sector. And where can he find really, really cheap labor? Refugees. So basically what he's going to do is he's going to tap into the refugee crisis around the world. He's going to invite all these refugees to come to America, making, I'm sure, the EU very happy for America's partnership in solving this crisis. Right. And he's going to allow them to come and work here. They're going to give their free labor in exchange for one, citizenship, and two, being taken care of by the government, being housed and fed. And right. so they don't have to worry about any of that stuff. It's a good deal all around, right? And the idea is because they're going to be housing these people, clothing them, uh, feeding them in bulk, the more people you have, the more the lower you can drive the cost and because you're not really paying these people to manufacture things we're gonna start undercutting the emerging market and China basically right and at the same time that you're giving these companies this free labor you mm -hmm. haven't changed taxes at all right no, so yeah. the economy is now gonna be growing in size you've grown the economy to a massive size like we're talking about huge amounts of growth we're gonna experience basically China GDP growth in America right which in, would be in, ridiculous right in the 21st century so at the same time, Palpatine will start giving out licenses to companies so that they can also use these refugees. In return, all they have to do is house and feed the refugees. Basically, they'll be taking over for the government in a certain way. Now, they'll, Palpatine will be able to control certain companies basically by allowing these licenses to go to them. If 
you do something against the government, you're going to have your license revoked and you won't be competitive anymore. And this will obviously also affect uh, the local job market. So what he's going to basically say is, you know, anybody who's working a menial job no longer has to work that job because we have free labor working the lowest jobs. And now that the economy has more money to it, we can expend that on social programs, which will take care of people. And so only people with a certain job and above will stay in their jobs. It'll be a very small percentage. And the rest of the people will be just kind of enjoying their lives out of the workforce and not complaining or rebelling anymore. So at this point, the refugee program goes international. Right. And so you're going to have all these people in these developing countries around the world suffering, dying. What can they do to survive? Well, in comes American Palpatine with the American Global Workers Alliance. Now, you too around the world can join AGWA and be part of this free refugee labor program. So once Palpatine has created AGWA, America can bring this refugee program to the rest of the world. And this is where we get to our more international phase of this discussion. And you can check that out in Generation Films. It's out right now on there. We're going to link it to you in the end screen. It's going to be in the details everywhere. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining me today, Ben. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And also, guys, don't forget to subscribe, like us on Facebook. And as usual, if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.